We have refrigerated trucks to hold the bodies. So many people are dying. The other day, uh, uh, a couple was brought in and maybe in their 40s from Bayside. The guy's sister said that they, he was just transferred here from Philly, second week of January. Worked at an ad agency. The wife was a physical therapist. They both got it within days of each other. They were the second couple to die here this month of COVID. The other one was older. 40s. Come on. There was one. We called him the rabbi. He was Italian. His name was Vinny. But he looked like a rabbi. <laughs> well, like a rabbi would look. Anyway. We can't let families in here. It's a rule. It's a good one. It's a little tricky right now. But I wanted Vinny's family to see him, so... I called his wife using FaceTime on my phone. I couldn't help it. I mean, what would you do? Anyway, his wife couldn't stop. We love you, Vinny. You're our rock. And she put the daughter on the phone. Kid must have been 10, so. And the rabbi, he starts blinking his eyes. Real slow. I just lost it. I couldn't help it. I mean, oh God, that was a tough one. <laughs> I mean, they're all tough, but uh, he died about an hour later. You see them shaking? That's the worst. And one of them was telling me it felt like being stabbed with an ice pick. Another one said, uh, he said, it felt like a leg cramp. We all know that feeling. But this is like a cramp through your whole body. And you don't know if it's going to stop or what. With all of us in PPE, it's, it's, it's hard to read people. It's staff. You can see the eyes, even through the shields. And it's raw. And the pain that we see and the pain that we're feeling is raw because sometimes it just is nonstop. The other day, three patients died in the same room over by the elevator. One came out and another one went in. That one came out and another one went in. He'd just become a grandfather, he was 58 years old. And Lutzi must have been working on him, doing CPR for 45 minutes. He was draining on all of us. And some days aren't so bad, like Tuesday. No, it was Monday. Oh, whatever. Anyway, somebody brought us some chocolate. I mean, like a lot of chocolate, <laughs> like 10 pounds of chocolate, the good stuff from Belgium. 
I don't know. They they worked for a company or they they owned a company or something. I don't remember. But they must have brought in about 20 boxes. I mean, they were a half pound each. And there was um, pralines and uh, some kind of fudge. And caramels, truffles. Yeah. Uh, we're all getting so fat. Well, it was nice. I felt like Santa Claus for a while. Walking down the halls, giving out chocolate. So they're building an extra area in the parking lot. Uh, beds, electricals, everything. And one day they're building it, the next day it's full. It's amazing. What was that line? Um, if you build it, they will come. Well, they're coming, all right. I have two kids. Glenn is nine and Macy is six. I live in Livingston, New Jersey. There isn't much traffic now, so it's about 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. If I get home, I have to strip down, throw everything into the washing machine and take a shower. But I can't touch my kids because So my husband found out about this group. They get in touch with people that have RVs. People aren't going anywhere now, so they, they have these RVs sitting in their driveways. And some website hooks up people with RVs to doctors and nurses who can't or won't live in their own homes. So I now have someone's RV in my backyard and I live back there and wave to my family. We have dinner sometimes, from a distance, of course. It's weird, but a godsend, believe me. And the people that brought this to us, it's been about two weeks now. They drove it from Ohio. I mean, what is that? A thousand miles? They just hooked up their Toyota to the back of it, dropped it off in Livingston, said hello, and drove home. They didn't even want gas money. They were just happy to help our first responders, they said. Can you believe it? What people are doing? You reminded me of my father. He could barely talk, but he loved jazz. So we had a little speaker for him. And he would listen to old stuff on Spotify. Coleman Hawkins, Miles, Artie Shaw. You would walk by and hear this wonderful rhythm coming from his room, like great bouncy music. And he was so still. At the end, he didn't say a peep, but you could, his blanket near his mouth would be moving a little bit, like his head was rocking back and forth. I thought he was coming around, but his fever spiked 103 and then his blood pressure shot down just like that. I mean, he didn't have a chance. It's funny, he didn't look like my father. He didn't sound like my father. He wasn't even Japanese like my father, but he reminded me of my father. I don't know.
we get dogs in here sometimes therapy dogs and they're they're great because they work for the staff as much as they work for the patients and you know they don't care if there's equipment in the way or if you're you know all wrapped up dressed like a mummy they still want a hug i hear that uh dogs and cats are flying out of shelters you know people are fostering strays all kinds of animals i guess people are home and they need some loving in the midst of all this horror it's good to know that that people are adopting i saw this video on cnn uh the shelter in florida empty for the first time I love that. That's that's great. I was in shock. Complete and utter shock. It happened to be a long day. We had 12 go down that day. And on the way back to Jersey, there was an accident in the tunnel. So it was an especially long ride home. I got off the exit thinking, all right, it's gonna be reheated pizza night again for sure. I took the left at Garfield and it hit me like a wave. People all over the neighborhood banging pots and pans, cheering like crazy, banners, everything for me. I mean, I'm the only one I know going into work and I saw my name on some of the sheets and posters. And there were people with loudspeakers on and people with microphones singing, we are the champions, except it was, you are the champion. It was incredible, I have to say. And never in my wildest dreams. I mean, I saw in the news what they were doing in Italy out the windows and stuff. But this? I'll never forget that, that's for sure. I mean, I'm just doing my job, right? <sighs> yes, it's historic. And I admit, I do feel like I'm doing something meaningful. But who gets a parade for doing their job? Like I'm a hero or something. <sighs> Amazing. She had beautiful silver hair. She was a retired junior high school teacher. She loved baking. It was a religion to her. She would bring in cookies for her kids at school on different holidays. She just liked to see their faces light up. <laughs> so she was telling me about this pudding recipe. My son, he loves pudding, any pudding. Well, Margaret, she swore to me about this recipe. It had cashew butter. I never heard of cashew butter, but she had her daughter bring in her index card with a recipe on it, and oh God, you should have seen it. it. Had stains all over it. She said she read about it in some uh, Brazilian cookbook or something, and she transcribed it. Anyway. That pudding was delicious. My husband, he had three portions. Margaret was a saint. She was so sweet. Every morning she was asking me about my family. Here she is, she's hooked up to oxygen. She could hardly breathe for days. She was so far gone, we had to recirculate her blood. And we don't do that every day, believe me. And she's asking me about. 
she made it though. She should have been on TV. Because when we wheeled her out, she got the big hoopla thing. <laughs> she was crying so much. We had to change her blouse before they put her in the car. <laughs> Some days it's 20. One day we had 23. We just bite our lip and go to the next patient. Any day we don't need a body back, that's a good day. I learned a lot from my son, Wyatt. He's on the computer all the time, um, always has been, he, but he's inquisitive and it's always seeking out something new. Right now he's learning to play the ukulele. We got him one for Christmas and he doesn't stop. And he's 11. When I see people on the news worried about being stuck in the house, I can't go to the beach, I can't go to a concert. I, mean, I think about Wyatt. He doesn't go on about what he can't do. He just focuses on what he can do. And when you think about it, that is a good approach to life. You know? Don't worry so much about what you don't have. Be glad you have what you do have. I've operated on people here who have ended up in body casts for months. My grandparents were put away in an internment camp. They would have been thrilled to learn how to play the ukulele, to eat anything they wanted in their own home instead of locked down at a strange camp in the middle of Oklahoma. My dad taught me something early on and I am, I'm glad why it, is learning it too, even at 11. No matter what you're facing, it can always be worse. Whatever's happening to you, it can always be worse. So, yes, we are stuck at home, but there are no bombs going off and there's no body cast itching you like crazy or medicines eating away at your insides. We'll get through this. You know, we don't know how long it'll take, but we, we will get through it. And while you're waiting, ah, I don't know, just grow some tomatoes and bake a cake you've never made before, something. Hey, I'd like to read Ulysses, but I don't have the time. Because when you think about it, just do what you can. You know? I think it's a good way to live. Virus or not. <laughs>